Well, hello and welcome back to Greg's Game Room. Now, today I am going to show you how to hook up your childhood video game systems to your modern television with HDMI, just like I'm showing Super C here on my uh, television. Now, of course, many of these systems can be modded to get you a better video output, but if you're a purist or someone like me who has absolutely no skills at soldering or don't know anybody who can do soldering for them, then this is a solution for you to get those systems on your modern televisions. All right, let's go ahead and get that childhood system out of the closet and back onto your television set. But before we do that, I gotta get out of here. This light is just not, not very good, but you know, I needed to show you the proof that I got it working. So let's go over to the, uh, the actual system that I have over here. Hold on, right over here, see? Got it right here. And there's the NES, it's actually controlling it right there. All right, well I hope the lighting is a little bit better now, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna talk about is RF. Now RF is the radio frequency style of signal that would come out of an older system like an Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, the XEGS does it, the Nintendo, Sega Master System, Genesis, and Television, ColecoVision. All of those systems would have the style where you have to hook them up to the, remember the switch box here like this, and uh, it never, never really worked that well. But what you want to do is get yourself a RF to coax converter. And that's one of these little guys right here. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, that's an RF to coax converter. And instead of using this box, you just plug it directly into your television. Or in this case, we're gonna have to hook it up to a VCR. Or if you want to spend a little bit, or rather a lot of money, <laughs> you can get yourself an RF demodulator, which will convert that RF signal into the RCA composite signal that we're all used to using like with the NES and, and Genesis and other systems like that. Of course you have to be careful and not get an RF modulator because that is going to convert a signal from the RCA composite to RF which is not what you want. Now those are a lot cheaper, you can probably get those for like 16 bucks and you're gonna think, oh great, this is all I need to get this to work. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> Believe me, I've been looking for an RFD modulator for a reasonable price for quite a long time, and I have yet to find one. And honestly, it's probably cheaper and better to just use a VCR. And of course, you're gonna need one of these guys, which is an RCA composite cable. I, I always call it, uh, RCA cable, so forgive me if I'm using the terminology wrong, but it, it's an RCA cable to me. The next thing you're going to need is a, a HDMI converter box. It's going to convert that RCA connection into an HDMI signal. Now, there's a lot of cheap ones out there, but the quality is questionable on them. I'm using a RetroTINK 2X Classic, which has RCA, S-Video, and component inputs, and that ran me about $90. Of course, the more you pay, the better the quality of the image you're gonna get. And if you want, you can pay more money for an OSSC or a FrameMeister, which of course will look better, but it's really up to you how much you wanna pay for these. And of course, you're gonna need an HDMI cable to hook up to the HDMI converter device into your television, so. These are, these are everywhere. I'm pretty much drowning in these right now. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to hook up our system to that RF to coax adapter. And then we're gonna connect the coax adapter to the input on the VCR, or if you spent the money, the RFD modulator. Next, you're gonna wanna connect your RCA cable to the output on the VCR, and then the other end to the HDMI converter. In my case, it's the, uh, the RetroTank 2X. And then you're gonna connect the HDMI cable to the HDMI my converter and then the other end of it to the television. And then you want to make sure that you turn on your VCR and you're going to have to change the channel to either two or three or four or whichever one that your system is set up for. Mine is set for two. Once everything is connected, you may need to select the correct output on your HDMI converter and then that's it. That's all you have to do. You start playing your games on your modern television. Now before we move on to the next type of connection that you can use, let me just say that RF is the last resort 
uh, when hooking up your systems. There are some systems that will allow you to use RCA composite directly, and that's what we'll talk about next. Now those RCA composite connections can be found on systems like the, uh, the NES, the Genesis, the Sega Master System, the Atari XEGS, and the Atari Jaguar, among other systems. Now the TurboGrafx-16 does not support RCA composite natively. You have to get either a, a turbo booster or you can get a, a Hyperkin uh, uh, module to hook onto the back of here so you can get composite video out of it. So really RF is your only choice with that one. And if you have the skills or the desire to mod your Atari systems or ColecoVisions or Intellivisions, you can get composite video out of those as well. Like I said, I'm not going to be doing that. Ah! Yep, that was my finger. But now let's talk about how you hook this up. Now what you're gonna need to get this to work, of course, is that RCA cable that I showed you earlier. Now some systems, like the Nintendo Entertainment System, allow you to use that exact cable and just plug it directly into it. It's really easy. Also the Atari XEGS allows for that as well, which is very nice. But for systems like the Super Nintendo and the Sega Master System and the Genesis, you will have to get a specific cable for that system in order to get a composite out of it. Fortunately, they're pretty easy to find. Of course, you know, if you have a Jaguar, it's those are a little bit more expensive and harder to find. Next, of course, you're gonna need that HDMI converter box. Now, hooking this up is a bit simpler than the RF solution. All you need to do is to take your RCA cable and hook it directly to your HDMI converter and then hook it up to your television with the uh, HDMI cable. Select the proper input on the HDMI converter and you're good to go. And finally, we have probably what is the best quality solution for hooking up your classic systems to a modern television, and that is S-Video. Now the systems that I have that support it are the Super Nintendo and the Jaguar. Now what you're gonna need is the specific cable for that system. Now in the case of the Super Nintendo, you can get a combined composite slash S-Video cable, which is actually what I have and it works pretty well. It's great because it also works on the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube. Now the Jaguar S-Video cable is a little bit more expensive. If you have a Jaguar, you're, you're, you're used to paying extra money for things anyways. And of course the other thing you're gonna need is that HDMI converter. That should be obvious at this point. So just like with composite, you're gonna hook that S-Video cable into the HDMI converter device that you have, and then you're gonna hook that HDMI cable into the converter device, and then you're gonna hook that into the television. At which point you're gonna have to select your input. You have to make sure you have it on S-Video. This should get you the best possible video quality that the system will natively do. Now here's a quick comparison of the composite versus S-Video as seen on the Super Nintendo. To me it looks a little bit sharper in S-Video. And lastly, there is one other way to hook up your classic systems directly to an HDMI, and that is with an HDMI adapter. Now, I've seen these go online for like 30 bucks, and I think they are using the RetroTINK technology in them already, so I don't know, it's, it's really up to you if you wanna do it that way. See there, you can hook up your childhood systems to your modern TVs if you have the right gizmos and cables. Of course, all of these solutions require that HDMI converter, so make sure you get one that you're happy with, that, you know, price-wise and quality-wise. I just decided to go with the RetroTINK because I think it fits in that perfect sweet spot between price, functionality, and the quality. All right, well, if this video helped you out, please click the like button down below. Click the subscribe and the bell icons if you want to see more videos from me. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.